Hello, teacher. Hello, hello. I think I am Hi. having troubles with the video, or I don't know. But something happened. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, teacher. Good evening, everyone. This is the last day of this week, and we are almost done. Almost. Almost, <laughs> almost. Just two more days after this one. So short. Really, really short. Time flies. And that's very true. Yes. <laughs> so we are going to begin because this is the last day of this week. And we are going to talk about conditional sentences. And yesterday we were uh, talking about uh, the last part of the verb tense. Also, we were talking about um, the listening for main ideas, the, the things that we need to know about listening for main ideas. And now we are going to talk about conditional sentences. We have a lot of All information right. about this topic because we are going to have uh, the principal ideas, the main ideas of this uh, topic, the conditional sentences. Then we are going to divide each of these conditional sentences because we have four types and we are going to see the difference between them. We are going to see some examples. We are going to see uh, some explanation for that kind of sentences. So we are going to begin with this topic because it's a kind of um, confusing in some point. So we need to, to pay attention to this and to have a lot of information to understand what are the uses for these conditional sentences and the structure. It can be um, some kind of confusing. That's the, the, the word. It can be confusing, but we are going to try to explain with a lot of information and a lot of examples that make um, a little bit easier. So we are going to begin with this topic that is conditional sentences. Conditional sentences. And it says that it's sometimes confusing for learners of English as a second language. And that's uh, very uh, accurate because it is sometimes confused when we are learning uh, topics uh, of grammar. The grammar can be very confusing for some people because we need to learn a lot of things. So we are going to see the four types of conditional that we have in English. Also, what is the if clause? That is one of the most important clauses that we are going to study, the if clause. And in this case, we can have these kind of clauses at the beginning or at the end of the sentence because we are going to have two separate sentences in one main idea. And in that case, we are going to have two, um, two phrases. One can be the if clause and the other one can be the main clause. And we are going to use it at the beginning or at the end. But now we are going to see what is this about? We have, in this case, first, we are going to talk just about the three, um, the three type of conditional sentences. We are going to use number one, number two, and number three. But we have another one that is the uh, zero conditional type. But in this moment, we are going to use conditional um, type one, type two, and type three. Then we are going to explain more about the uh, zero conditional, but now we are going to use just the three of them. So we are going to use three types of conditional sentences. And we are going to separate them like this because it will be easier to understand. So let me see. 
Okay, we have here the type. And we have here the condition. So we have type number one, two, and three. And the number one, it says, condition possible to fulfill. Number two, condition in theory possible to fulfill. And then number three, condition not possible to fulfill or it's too late. So in this case, the condition of this kind of um, sentences is that in the number one or the type of one, that it talk about a condition that is possible to fulfill or to complete. And the number two, we have condition that in theory is possible to fulfill. And in the number three, condition that is not possible to fulfill or it is too late. Tenemos estos tres tipos de oraciones que usan los condicionales o las condiciones. Y en el tipo número uno, tenemos aquellas que sí son posibles de completar, de llenar. En la número dos, en teoría, es posible de llenar o de completar. Y en la tercera, no es posible de completar o de llenar, o que ha sido muy tarde. So, we are going to talk about the form. And we have, in this case, we're going to do it something like this. We have three, four. We have here the type again. We have the if clause. And we have the main clause. In this moment, we're going to have just a, a general idea of these um, conditional sentences. Uh, we are going to explain more about them in, in some moments, but now we are going to have the general idea of this topic because we need to know what are the, the uh, conditional sentences and what are the construction of them. So we are going to divide this and we have type number one, two, and three. Tenemos aquí que eh, para formar esta, estas eh, oraciones necesitamos una cláusula que lleve if y una cláusula principal. Y vamos a ponerlas por eh, categorías, la número uno, dos y tres, y qué tipo de cláusulas necesitamos para formarlas. The if clause for type number one it's in simple present. In this case, we are not talking about examples. We are talking about the construction of these, um, of these sentences. So the if clause, it will be written or uh, we are going to write the uh, clause in simple present. And for the main clause, we are going to use will that it's talking about future, or we are going to use the model plus infinitive. For the type number two, we are going to use simple past. And for the main clause, we are going to use will plus infinitive. And then number three, 
we are going to use past perfect. And for the main clause, we're going to use will plus have. Plus past participle. Those are the structures that we are going to use to create these kind of sentences. In the type number one, we are going to use the if clause, la clausula que lleva el if, la palabra if. It's in simple present. That is the time, that is the tense that we are going to use. For the main clause, because these kind of sentences are created with two parts, the if clause and the main clause. So, in this case, we are going to have two different tenses in one sentence. The if clause for the type one is in simple present, but in the main clause, we are going to use will that represents the future, or we are going to use the modal verbs plus infinitive. Oh, you are having troubles to hear me? I can hear you. Oh. Yes, teacher. Yes, teacher. Okay, okay. If someone has uh, troubles to hear, I don't know if they can, um, no sé si pueden salir y luego volver a entrar para ver si es algún problema um, de la plataforma. Si no, ya vamos a, a, a ver cómo podemos hacer para los que no pueden escuchar bien la, la sesión. So then we are saying we have two different sen uh, tenses in the, the sentence. For the type number two, we have the simple past. We are going to use the simple past with the if clause. And for the main clause, we are going to use will plus infinitive. And for the type number three, we are going to use past perfect for the if clause. And then we are going to use will plus have plus past participle for the main clause. Algo que necesitamos tener en cuenta. Estas oraciones se crean a partir de dos. Dos oraciones que van a trabajar juntas. La cláusula que lleva el if, que es la, la, por eso se llama if clause, y la main clause, que es la principal. En eso vamos a crear nuestra, dos, eh, nuestra oración de dos partes. Siempre van a ir unidas en dos partes. La if clause va a llevar o simple present o simple past o past perfect. Ese va a ser el tense que vamos a utilizar con la if clause. Y con la main clause vamos a utilizar will and future modal plus infinity. Luego vamos a utilizar el will plus infinity o el will have past participle depending of the type of the sentence. Then, we are going to use some examples to make this information better to understand. We are going to use the if clause at the beginning. We are going to use these sentences or these examples at the beginning of the, um, the sentence. So we have the examples. We have four uh, spaces here. So we have here type, we are going to divide in types. If close and main close. So again, we have type number one, number two, and number three. So in the first one, we have, if I study, if I study, comma, we have a comma. We are going to separate the sentences or the phrases by comma. I have the simple present. If I study, then I have my main clause. I will. In future, I will pass the exam. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to mark this and I am going to mark this one. So I have two uh, phrases in one sentence. If I study, I will pass the exam. And we have in the first uh, table that the condition of this sentence is something possible to fulfill, algo posible de completar. And in this sentence, we have, if I study, if I do something for myself, I will pass the exam. I will uh, get good grades. So I am doing two separate things, but we can combine them. Tenemos aquí la oración número uno. Ponemos una condición que vamos a realizar y ponemos cuál va a ser el resultado de esa, de esa condición o de esa acción que vamos a realizar. If I study, si yo estudio, I will pass the exam. Voy a pasar el examen. That's very simple. I have this first uh, sentence. Then we have the type number four. I, I mean, the, the, the type number two. If I study, in, in this case, we are using the simple past. If I study, in this case, we are going to use the verb in past, separate by comma. If I study, I will, in this case, we're going to use will plus infinitive. I will pass the exam. Um, maybe uh, I could uh, do in the past because I need to be prepared for the exam, but I, Maybe I, I, I didn't do anything for uh, obtaining good grades, but it is something possible. En la segunda, esto habla del, eh, lo estamos utilizando el pasado. Si hubiera estudiado, si yo hubiera estudiado, hubiera pasado el examen. Something that in theory, it's possible to fulfill. Es posible de completar. Pero ¿qué pasó? No lo hice, no lo realicé. Pero en teoría lo puedo hacer porque puedo llegar a la primera, eh, al primer tipo de oración, if I study. But in this case, I did not study for the exam. But in theory, it's possible to fulfill. Number three, if I had studied, I would have as the exam. So in this case, we can use this um, phrase in Spanish that uh, a lot of people say, es llorar sobre la leche derramada, in this case, because it is something that we are, crying over because we know that we have to do something to obtain a result. But in this case, we are just saying that maybe I could do it. I, I can, or I, um, yes, I could obtain a better uh, grade or I will have passed the exam, but I did anything to obtain that result. In this case, when we are using the main, uh, the if clause, we are going to use a comma. That is very important that we uh, write the comma when we are using the if clause at the beginning of the uh, sentence. Siempre le vamos a poner una coma cuando utilicemos el if clause. Eso nos va a dividir, ¿verdad? Nuestras oraciones. Now, we are going to have um, the same examples, but in this case, we are going to have the if clause at the end of the sentence. So let me copy this here. But in this case, we are going to change this one. We're going to have this, and now we are going to create 
something here. Okay, we have here the main clause, and now we are going to add the if clause. So, and in this case, we are not going to use the point because it is not the end of the sentence. So now I have, I will pass the exam if I study. I will pass the exam if I study. I will um, have passed the exam if I had studied. It is um, the same to separate uh, phrases in one sentence, but in this case, we're not going to use the comma because we are not using the if clause at the beginning. In this case, we are um, using the if clause like a complement of the sentence. So in this, in this case, we are not going to use the comma. It is not necessary. It is necessary when we are um, writing the if clause at the beginning. Diferencia entre usar el if clause al principio o al final es que cuando lo utilizamos al principio si sí le ponemos la coma para separar la oración Cuando lo usamos al final, no es necesario utilizar la coma porque lo podemos utilizar como un complemento de la oración. But it's the same. It did not change the meaning. It is just change the place of the, um, the sentence. Now, we are uh, going to have examples, but we are going to have two different types of examples. We are going to have the affirmative ones and the negative sentences. So for this one, we have one, two, three, four. Four in So in this case, we have the type. We have here plus or minus. We have here the examples. Now, in this one, we have the long forms and the short forms. We have two different types, the long ones and the short ones. So we have the type. We have type number one. And we have in the first one, we have the positive one or the affirmative one. That is the same uh, sentence that we are uh, studying uh, in this moment. So we have, if I study, I will pass the exam. That is the same that we used before. But we are going to write the negative one, and it says, if I study, I will not fail the exam. Or we can say, if I do not study,
I will fail the exam. In the short forms, it says, if I study aisle, in this case, we are uh, talking about contractions. So we have here the structures for these sentences. We have the present. Then we have wheel. Again, we have this uh, structure here. So in this case, we are using the contraction because it is the short form. So in this case, when we are uh, using this kind of a uh, connotation, in this case, we are using the negative ones. And in the first uh, sentence of the negative, we are uh, reading that if I study, I will not fail the exam. It is negative, but about the structure, it is talking about the structure, but it is not a, a, a negative action. It is just the connotation. And in the second one, it is negative because we are saying that if we don't um, study, we will fail the exam. Para la parte negativa, tenemos dos, eh, dos oraciones. En la primera estamos utilizando una estructura negativa, pero al final estamos hablando de una acción positiva. Porque dice que si estudiamos no vamos a fallar el examen, solo es la connotación de la oración, no es que sea una acción negativa. En la segunda, eh, sí es una oración negativa porque dice que si no estudiamos, vamos a fallar el examen. So in that case, we have two kinds or two different types of negative sentence. One with a con um, but connotation and the other one with a, a negative structure. So that's very simple. Now we have with the number two, we have again a positive and negative ones. And we have the example. So we have the long ones and the short ones. We have here the structure because we are using the past in the type number two, and we are going to use the rule and infinity for the main structure of the main clause. Now we are going to see the negative ones of this type number two. We have Again, two sentences that are talking about the negative parts. And we have the number one. If I study, I will not fail the exam. And the second one, if I did not study, 
I will fail the exam. So in the second one, we are using the auxiliary did to uh, make this a sentence in a past. So it is not necessary to change the verb. That is something that we already know because we study the different uh, past tenses and the uses of some auxiliaries. So in this case, we are using the auxiliary did and we are not going to change the verb because we have this, uh, this auxiliary that uh, help us to understand that the sentence is in past. So we have the short ones. So we have here the short ones. And now we're going to see the number three. We have the positive and we have the negative ones. And we have, we have if I had a study, We have the negative ones. If I had studied, I would not have failed the exam. And the next one, if I had not studied, I will have failed the exam. And the short ones. So we have here the three types of conditional sentences and we have the examples. In this case, uh, we are saying uh, that in the first type, we are talking about something that is possible to fulfill. And we have the examples. If I study, I will pass the exam. That is something that we uh, can do easily because we are going to do something to obtain that result. In the number two, it's talking about that something that in theory it's uh, possible to fulfill, but if I did not anything to do it, I can have the result I want. And in the third one, it's talking about that something that is not possible to fulfill. In this case, it is because we are too late to do that action. So, tenemos los tres tipos de condicionales. Ya decíamos que el primero es para hablar de cosas que sí se pueden completar. 
que si yo hago una acción, voy a obtener un resultado. En la número dos, si eh, eh, trata sobre aquellas acciones que sí son posibles de realizar, pero que si yo no hago nada, no voy a conseguir el resultado. Y en el número tres, pues obviamente es algo que ya no se puede completar porque ya es muy tarde para hacerlo. And we have the structure that we were uh, learning about this uh, kind of uh, conditional sentences. Now, we are going to uh, say something extra about these things that we are uh, learning right now, because this is the general part. After that, uh, the things that we are going to say about the uh, substitute, some of these words, we are going to um, divide the information and we are going to learn more about the, uh, this kind of sentences. But it says, we can substitute cool or my for will, should, may or must are sometimes possible. So we have here like a note. And it says that we can substitute cool or might or cool. We can change these words or this one. And also says that Should may or must are sometimes possible to. So we are going to have some examples of these changes. We have number one, and it says, I will pass the exam. In this case, we are not talking about the clauses, the if clauses, we are talking about the main clauses. En este ejemplo, no vamos a utilizar el if clause, vamos a utilizar el main clause. So, en, en esos casos es que se va a cambiar o se puede cambiar el could or might for a would. Then I can use could in the same uh, sentence. I might pass the exam. I may pass the exam. I should pass the exam. And we have I must as the exam. So we can use different uh, words to represent this main clause. So now we are going to see more information about this kind of conditional sentences, and we are going to divide this information that we already study in this general part of the sentences or the, um, the uh, conditional sentences And in this one, we are going to see the other type of a sentence that we have that is the zero conditional, because I said that we have four, four types. That we have the zero conditional, the one, two, and three. So we have four. And in this case, we're going uh, to see some um, specific information about these uh, sentences that we are going to use to create them. So. We know that uh, in this case, we are going to do a review and an explanation of the parts. So we have that in this kind of conditional sentences, we have two parts. We are going to divide, divide it like this. In conditional sentences, we have two parts. We have two parts. That's the, the, the first thing that we need to know. We have number one, the if clause, and 
the main clause. That's something very important to understand that we have two parts of the sentence. Then we have, it, it can be uh, used with the main clause at the beginning or the if clause at the beginning of the sentence. When the sentence begin with if, when, or unless, in this case, we are going to use another words to use or to create these kind of sentences. We can um, use the comma. So we are going to have another uh, specific information. In this case, we said, we can begin the sentence with the main clause or with the if clause. So this is something that we already study in the first part, that we can begin the sentence with the main clause or with the if clause. It is in, not necessary to have a specific structure. We can uh, be very dynamic with these kind of sentences. But it says, when the sentence begin with, and we have here some words, if, when, or, unless, We are going to write a comma, this symbol, right? So we have here that uh, this is something that we have uh, seen in the in the first part that it says when we use the if clause at the beginning of the sentence we are going to separate uh, the sentence by a comma and we are going to have to separate uh, phrases but in the case that uh, the sentence begin with the main clause we are not going to separate them. And we have here the first example. If the temperature drops to zero uh, C, the water will turn into ice. And in this case, we are going to use the comma we have because we have the if clause at the beginning of the sentence. So in this case, it's necessary to separate them by a comma. But if I write the sentence with the main uh, structure, the main um, clause at the beginning, I am not going to separate them because in this case, it is not necessary. So I'm going to write the main clause at the beginning, then I will write the um, if clause at the end. 
water will turn So that's very simple. If I am not using the if clause at the beginning, I am not going to use the comma and that's the sentence. And it says that it says four type of uh, conditional sentences, four types. In the first uh, part of this topic, I, uh, I was saying that we are going to use just three. But in this case, in this part, we are going to see the number four. So it says that uh, it exists four types of conditional sentences. And we are going to begin with the zero conditional. That is the number one. So in this case, the structure for this a, a sentence is that we have, let's see, we're going to separate like this. We have the if clause and the main clause. And what is the structure for this? What are the tenses that we are going to use in this kind of uh, sentences? So in this case, we're going to use the present simple in both of them. We're going to use this, the present simple in the if clause and the present simple in the main clause. So in both of them, we are going to use the same tense. And it says, we use the zero conditional to express um, things that always occurs in a specific form. And in the if clause, we have general truths or natural um, things that we are going to use. Para la cero condicio, eh, la, eh, esta oración de cero condicional dice que la utilizamos para expresar hechos que siempre ocurren de la forma indicada, o sea que no hay cambios en la forma indicada. And also it says que, eh, por ejemplo, son verdades generales o eh, también hablamos de leyes naturales. So in this case, we are talking about the, um, the general truths, something that is real, something that is not going to change because it's always happening in the same way.
So in this case, we are talking about something that is certain, something that always happened uh, in the same way. So we have the example, if you heat water, it boils. Si tú calientas agua, ¿qué va a pasar? Va a hervir. So in this case, the if clause, it's telling me something that always happened. So in that case, we are not going to say, if you heat water, it will be cold. It is not possible because we are heating. We are using fire. So in this case, the if flow is telling me that uh, something is going to happen all the time. Para el cero condicional or zero conditional, son cosas que son hechos que van a pasar y que la if, uh, yes, the if clause express that uh, through that in, in that case is general truth or natural law, something about nature that is going to happen. Para esta parte no estamos hablando así como hacíamos con eh, los otros, eh, las otras oraciones de cosas que eran posibles de lograr. En, esta, en este caso es algo natural, algo que sí va a pasar porque si hacemos una cosa, la otra por ende va a suceder así como en el ejemplo. If you hit water, it boils. So in this case, we are saying that the, the tense that we are using for this zero conditional or for this kind of sentence is the present simple for both of them, for the if clause and the main clause. We have another example here and it says, if he comes home early, He sits in the garden. Maybe in this case, this is something that he did. Uh, yes, he did all the time or he do all the time because if he comes home early, he sits in the garden to take a rest. So in this case, it's something that always happened the same way. So it says, we can use when, in this case, we can use when instead of if. So that's why we were uh, saying that we are going to use if, when, and unless. So in this case, we can use when instead of if. So we are going to do something like this, when or if I am tired. This case, it is not like the, the same structure. This is just an example in the changing of the if for when. So in this case, we are going to see the example for the changing of when instead of if and it says when or if I am tired, I get black circles under my eyes. So in that case, we can change those uh, uh, words and that is uh, the same meaning. It is not something very complicated to change. And we have, again, the first conditional. In this case, we uh, learned something about the first conditional in the previous part, but we are going to divide it like uh, the zero conditional. So we have the first conditional and we are going to see again uh, the structure. But in this case, we're going to see four. 
This one, we have the if clause. And we have the main clause. So remember, in this case, we are going to use the present simple for the if clause. And for the main clause, we are going to use, in this case, it, it is saying future simple that you know that is the use of will. Will. Also, we can use imperative and we can use modal verb for this kind of sentence. And it says that we use the first conditional to express something possible. We already uh, know that in this case, we are going to talk about something that is possible. And this is something that is, is possible that happen in the present or even in the future. And we have some examples more. If we finish early, we will go to the cinema. So we have, again, in this case, we were learning something about the, the first conditional. And this is like a, a more extend explanation about it. Tenemos ahora las dos partes, el cero conditional and the first conditional. En el cero conditional está hablando de cosas reales, cosas que tienen una razón, que siempre van a pasar de la misma manera. Y en el first conditional, ya lo decíamos, son cosas que podemos completar, cosas que podemos realizar. Y que igual, ¿verdad? Así como en el cero conditional, we separate the sentences by a comma. En, en esta parte igual podemos separarlo con una coma cuando utilizamos el if clause at the beginning of the sentence. And we use the uh, tenses for these uh, sentences. In the zero conditional, we have present for the if clause and present for the main clause. And in the first conditional, we use present simple for the if clause and future simple for the main clause or the use of will. En eso sí vamos cambiando con, los, con las oraciones, ¿verdad? Con, con los diferentes tipos. Para el tipo cero utilizamos presente en ambas. Para el primero utilizamos presente para el if clause. Pero utilizamos el futuro para el main clause. Because um, we are telling that we can perform this action in the present or even in the future. And for the other ones, we know that we change the uh, tenses for the other um, a structure or for the other kind of sentences. So we are going to end the session here because it's time to finish. I hope that you have a really good night and a really amazing uh, weekend. And we are going to see each other on Monday of the last two days of this course. So have a good night and see you on Monday. Okay, see you Monday. Good night. Good Monday. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good Monday. Good night. Yes, I will send the document uh, up to the group. Don't worry.